and it's good to walk slow. I've done a few where like the other person starts oh, walking yeah. faster, so I start walking faster. So <laughs> they start like walking shaking. faster, and then we're just like speed walking. And, <laughs> this yeah. is like a stroll. Right, this is a stroll, exactly. <laughs> uh, Stefania, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes. Um, I'm Stefania Cartoni. I am from Chile, and I'm doing a PhD in agronomy with Mark Rams, and um, I'm doing research in silvopasture. Research in silvopasture, mm -hmm. okay. And can you say where we are right now? Right now we are. Oh my god! Oh. <laughs> That's, I, I almost did that too. My pants. <laughs> that it's good that I didn't swear. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah. It's very cool. It'll it'll happen sooner or later. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. So. so people can probably see in the video we're kind of walking down a long row of trees. These are walnut trees. Mm -hmm. And where are we, Stefania? So this is an old black walnut plantation. Okay. It's located at the USDA Dairy Forage Research Station. And it is one of our research sites. Okay. So, so we're just north of Prairie du Sac, Wisconsin, which is also um, about 15 or 20 miles east of Spring Green, Wisconsin, mm -hmm. which is yep. where the Savannah Institute has its Spring Green campus. Um, and as you said, you're doing research here on silvopasture mm -hmm. and um, specifically on silvopasture establishment, yes, right? Yes, exactly. So people who know a little bit about silvopasture know that silvopasture is managing livestock and trees and forage all together. And um, in some cases, like on some of the spring green farms, we have the livestock and the forage and we're just planting the trees. But here at the Dairy Forage Research Center, they have the trees, but not the forage. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and or so, the animals. Or yeah, the animals. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Stefania, what are you researching in terms of silvopasture mm -hmm. establishment? Um, so these trees, have been, so this plantation and um, this area has been invaded by shrubs mm -hmm. and a lot of other species that are not useful from the silvopasture point of view. So we- Should we take a look at one oh, here? Oh, yes. So we can walk this over to it. This is yeah. honeysuckle. Mm -hmm. Like one of the big shrubs that is invading this area. One of the worst. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't allow a lot of grasses to grow underneath. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't be helpful for animals if we wanted to establish the disaster here. This project started last year, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And and so what happened last year? Last year um, we defined the plot layout mm -hmm. and we did the first uh, goat race. So the goats came in, in June this year and they were in each plot for around three to five days. So your yeah. initial treatments were either goats or forestry mowing, mm -hmm. and your follow-up treatments are either goats again uh -huh. or herbicides. Yes. So exactly. one of the treatments is just goats on goats. Goats on goats. Yeah. Goats on goats on goats. <laughs> yeah, and we'll see the differences, because it might be, well, we, we can already see some differences. We can, well, clear differences between the goat treatment and the uh, forestry mowing. So you said the the forestry mode plots mm -hmm. look way different because the forestry mower just takes out yeah, everything. Yeah, ev it's like, very like, clear cut. Yeah, <laughs> literally clear yes. cut. <laughs> and the goats, it's like a uh, like a strip in the like up to yeah, this like high up kinda. to four or five feet. Yeah. Okay. And so you were saying on we were just on a pasture walk today, and one of the things you've noticed just in the last couple of weeks is that the goat browsing did do some damage yeah. in a good way. Yes, definitely. Uh, so we compared to the control and the control has like a lot of regrowth already and the goat plants have, have some regrowth because it's normal, the plants keep growing and they try to live, but it's a lot less. Like it's, it's, there's a lot more light reaching the soil surface. Okay. The plants that were treated by goats. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, and some of the shrubs we saw that had been browsed by goats were dead. Yeah, some of them were 
like that already. Which, yeah. or, yeah, which I was great. very surprised by. Great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's more than one. Yeah. Killed by goats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the effect of the forestry uh, mower. It, it cuts down almost to soil surface. So it was cut down at this height and this shrub was pretty big like you can see it's very wide the the trunk yeah. or stem mm -hmm. or whatever and this was done a couple of months ago and it's already this high mm -hmm. well, i'm short so it's not super high but <laughs> um but yeah so uh i don't know so after this regrow either goats or herbicides will be applied so that's like even if the forest mowing looks perfect at the beginning, it regrows again. So we still have to manage it in order to be, make sure we kill it. So Stefania, you were saying that where we're walking right now, people <laughs> can see it. This is all forestry mode. Yes. So there's a bunch of, you know, we're kind of walking through wood chips, mm -hmm. which is like, yeah. So this that's is the residue that's left. Uh huh. And the you said the forestry mower can take down like pretty big trees. Yes. So. Now we're moving up to a plant that was in forestry mode and so I'll this tree. Uh -huh. <laughs> you move this way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this could have been taken down easily by the forestry mower. Mm -hmm. And this rub. So all of this would have been gone. Um, yeah, I think at least at least four inches and it's probably about 10 inches that the mower can take okay yeah we, we didn't need it to take everything that it could because that would be that would leave maybe too much mulch for uh, for its growth because mm -hmm. that would um, affect the contact of the seeds with the soil so we don't we don't want that much yeah so it's a balance between how much we want to open up so that we get light but also if we get too much mulch on the soil, it won't grow. Right. So, yeah. So you haven't seeded any kind of forage in here yet, Not right? yet. So okay. all of this grew just because of the, the light that's reaching the soil. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. And it looks like mostly bluegrass yeah. for the grass. And in then, this area, we have a lot of Kentucky yeah. bluegrass. Yeah. And so I guess that's what you and the other folks are doing today. Yes. <laughs> surveying what plants are mm -hmm, here exactly yep. uh, 20 quadrats per plot and they will count we will count every different species that we see wow yeah and you're also counting trees right all the trees are counted and measured the, the diameter so okay the, the diameter of each tree is recorded and the species and every single shrub and every single shrub yeah wow. it's a lot of information which is great yeah it's it, it'll be very thorough and we'll get a lot of answers from this yeah and you're also collecting economic data right yes so we will we are uh, recording everything that we do here all labor costs regarding the management or uh, the forest remover the goat grazing all the herbicides that will be applied everything is recorded uh, in labor and in, in monetary cost so we can compare because a farmer will need to know what's the most effective method and also what's the most cost effective method yeah that's very important great